Jackos at the wheel, and we've got a cracking away win behind us. Now, to get our season really going, we need to follow it up. Two home matches over the next few days, starting today against Doncaster Rovers. 
Lots coming up in today's show where we'll speak exclusively to caretaker boss Johnny Jackson and as well as defender Ben Purrington who's back in the side. We'll also hear from women's team captain Lauren Bruton and we'll check in on Brownie ahead of kickoff here at the Valley, which means that Alan Kerbishley can get a word in edgeways in the Charlton TV studio presented by DNEL Limited. Delighted to say in between us, we also have this man. You're complaining about the challenge by Horizon. Oh, I'm shocked they've taken the lead. Goal kick by Kylie. And let's be on to it into a flash. This is Stewart. He's also committed to get there. It is a very warm welcome to Kevin Lisby. Liz, great goals, great celebrations, great memories. Great times, yeah, great times. Just looking back at that and seeing all the smiling faces and the young faces, even my young face. But, um, yeah, really good time at the club and I um, love coming back in. I love being here. You still got that young face, I have to say. Are you going to keep your shirt on today if we score? How is the, bo how is the body fat right now? Um, no, I don't think the missus will be too happy if I, if I take my top off. So, um, yeah, I mean, just looking at, the, as I say, looking at those videos now just brings a smile to my face. A really good times at the club and um, as I say I love being here and love being back at this club. Yeah, how much are you looking forward to today? Yeah, brilliant. I mean, especially after Saturday I spoke to, to Jacko um, just before the game and I was so pleased for him and Yuli and, and the club and the team um, to get that win against a really good team. I don't think they've lost at home. I think they've won all their, their, their home games if I'm correct. So to go there and, and put a real good performance on and, and get a win was really good. You're correct, it was a 100% home record for, for Sunderland at the stadium. Like, Liz took his shirt off for a few celebrations there. Did you have a word afterwards at all, or were you just jealous, Curbs? No, I don't think you got booked then. <laughs> if you yeah, got booked, you might have got a few <laughs> 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 You wouldn't have done it then. Yeah, I wouldn't get paid that much, so I need to keep the money. <laughs> no, you would have kept it up. <laughs> that, that would still stay in your mind, <laughs> fine. Listen, it was a great win up at Sunderland, and we'll, yeah. we'll come to that later. But today's an important game, and it's a big one for Jacko as well, isn't it? Leading the team out in front of the fans mm. for the first time. How do you think he'd be feeling? Oh, he'd be, he'd be really nervous. But it's a bigger game, I think, Scott. Like, listen, expectation levels last week was, no man, let's go up to Sunderland, it's a really tough game, we might get something from it. No but, one really expected anything, did they? Yeah, really? but you, you expected a bounce, but, mm. you know, would have been well happy with a point, but it was fantastic. But now the expectation, expectation levels have changed. You know, we're playing Doncaster at the bottom and they're with us and it's a must-win game. And the fans are coming in expecting to win. So that's a little bit different uh, to last week, but I think a bigger game than last week now. It certainly is a, an absolutely massive game. Fantastic win at the weekend last weekend. Can we follow it up this time around? OK, let's get straight to it. Kick off less than 45 minutes away. I spoke to Jacko, pitch side a little earlier. Jacko, you made the, the perfect start last week, both performance as well as results. When you look back at it, what was the, what was the biggest thing you felt you needed to change? I just felt we needed to show a little bit more intent uh, and intensity in our play, uh, mainly out of possession. I thought it was something that when I looked at, at the squad and, and the team and, and what had gone on before, what could I implement as quickly as possible? And so I put a lot of my focus on that. Uh, like I've said, I think there's a lot of quality in that building and I think a lot of the in possession stuff can take care of itself, but sometimes you have to get yourself in the game. Um, so the, I think the biggest thing was that intensity and that, that sort of willingness to go and press and be, be front foot, especially, you know, away from home. You, they might have been expecting us just to sit off them, but I sort of said to the lads, no, we've come here to go and get after them. And that's exactly what they did. So for them to implement it straight away was brilliant. They certainly did, and incredible considering how the, the great run, home run, they were on. You've had a full free week now. How, how beneficial has that been in training to implement your ideas even more? Because you, you didn't have much time before Sunderland, did you? No, it was, it was a day, wasn't it? So we've had a great week on the training pitch. Obviously, it's, you know, it's still a limited amount of time, and uh, I was just building on, on what we've done, uh, just tr adding, trying to add little bits of details as we go, again, without overcomplicating it and bogging them down. You know, what I saw on Saturday was a real good foundation of, of 
how I want my team to look. Um, so it's just sort of building on that. Reminders as well, because I think the minute that you come off it and you assume that, that you've now one aspect, it's when you slip up. So it's constant reminders about what, what I want, what I expect in and out of possession. Um, yeah, and we just try to build it up and, and we've had a good week, we've had good intensity to everything that we've done, which is another thing that you know, I demand. So, um, yeah, we're, we're in a good place going into the game. So how does the team look this afternoon? Well, two enforced changes. Uh, obviously, Sam Mavell came off last week and uh, particularly bad injury. You'll have seen that he had surgery yesterday. So we're going to be without Sam for a while. So, so Piercy comes into the team for him. And uh, unfortunately, we lost Adam Matthews. Uh, during the week as well. He came out of the Sunderland game with a little niggle that he's not been able to shake. Um, so Chris Gunter comes into the side as a, as a replacement for him. But it looks like it's still the same formation. And two up front as well. Do you think we're better with two up front? I, I do personally. It's something that I really like. Um, I like that big man, little man combination. And I just think it gives you an opportunity to go and get after teams from the front as well. Um, you've got two willing runners there. You saw even in from Jaden question marks perhaps before whether you could go and press with him in the team. Well, I think he showed you last week that he can. Uh, and, and it comes natural to Connor as well. So we've got two guys there willing to do the work, willing to uh, you know, set us off from the front, if you like. And I uh, also feel it causes a lot of teams problems when you, know, when you are attacking to have those two. Uh, what about Doncaster as well? They're, they're right down there with us, but they've picked up in form recently, haven't they? They're, they're a good side, Scott, and, and if you, you know, like most teams in this league, if you allow them time and space, uh, they've got good technical players, they've got a little bit of energy about them, uh, and they'll hurt you. you know, they've got players that can really hurt you, so um, yeah, we have to respect the opposition. Of course we do. Richie Wellens' teams, they always want to play. They want to play football in the right way, uh, which is credit to him and his team. Um, but my focus is on my team and what we can do. Uh, I've seen enough last week to feel that we're in a good place and, and that this team can go on a run. So we have to show it today. Now, you've had some magical moments here as a player and you've done it once before in terms of leading the team out. But what will it mean to do it in front of the fans? It's going to be an unbel unbelievably special day for me. Proud, proud day. Uh, it was the last time I, I took the team for that one game, but of course there was no crowd in. Um, so as good as it was, it, it won't be a patch on today. So um, we have to, we have, as a team, have to try and thrive off of that. There should be a good atmosphere, hopefully a bumper crowd with kids for a quid. So we have to, we have to use that as fuel, um, really buy into that for us. And, and I know that the, uh, the crowd will always get behind the team if they see a team putting the work in. Yeah, just a final one on the crowd as well. How important is it we get everyone in the same direction? Because it hasn't been of that of late. How important will they be today? They'll be key in everything that we want to do. And it, it hasn't been like that because the performance hasn't been there and the results haven't been there. But if the performance is right and the commitment by that, I mean the commitment and, you know, the pride in the shirt and the work, the crowd will always get behind you. And that'll, that's win or lose. But for me, if, if that's there, the wins will come. You know, you won't win every game, but if, if you've got that commitment, you'll win more than you lose. That's a guarantee. And then the crowd, if they see that, they're going to get behind you. And this place, obviously, when, it, when it's like that, there's no better place in football. Good luck. Thanks, Scott. Still can't quite see a grey hair there. Apparently <laughs> 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 was on about it last week. <laughs> you might do in a couple of months' time. <laughs> might do in a few yeah. months' time. Yeah. But it is two changes, both of them enforced. Gunter and Pearson for Lavelle and Matthews. And you can understand curbs really why there's not too many optional changes, if yeah. you know what I mean. I didn't realise that Sam Lavelle was, was that bad, mm. but um, yeah, he's got two enforced changes, but two experienced players coming in. It's not as if uh, you know you, you're having to put a youngster in there. So I think Gutner can play as, as a centre half, he's played there before, so that's no problem to him. Do you like the 3 5 2? I like, I like the fact that it, it gives you two forwards, but I didn't realise that Leco could play as well like that as a wing back. Mm. You know, because in all fairness, last week he played like a right winger. He, he wasn't, he, obviously he got back and defending when he had to, but I was a bit surprised, you know, asking a forward to perhaps do that, that job and be a bit more responsible. Why is he touching you there, Liz? Well, because he put, a bit, a bit no, no, because, back. because, because, <laughs> <laughs> Liz played wide right a few yeah. times, and, but you know, it ain't natural to track back, but yeah. you've got to do it. Yeah. But I was a bit surprised in his performance in that, 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 that Jacko saw that he could do it. You know, and was happy for him to play as a wing back. I, I think there almost has to be a, a, a 
and acceptance. It's a it's a lopsided three five two. If you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. You've got Jonathan Lukaku, who's, who's actually a forward player. Yeah. You've got Ben Perrington, who's a left back, yeah. but they're both playing in the similar positions. Yeah. One, Liz, how would you fancy playing in that wing back position? And two, interesting, Jacko said about the big man, little man. He likes that. I'd imagine you would have liked someone alongside you up front. Yeah, I mean, I've, unfortunately, I was, I was the big man, weren't I? When yeah, I, when well, I played up front. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, I agree with Jacko. I think, especially when you're not doing too well, I think it's. It's hard to get your team to really press if you've only got one up front. Um, so I think giving the two up front, first of all, I, I spoke to him earlier and he's really intent on the team pressing and winning the ball high up and staying close to the opposition. So I think he's really focused on that and I think two up front gives you that. And also when you've got the ball, you've also got more options up front and, and more chance of scoring. And I think two up front, the fans appreciate this. Yeah, it's not there's two forwards out there, so yeah. like, get anything in the box, hopefully there'll be at least two people in there and yeah. it, it gives you a bit of a lift. And you don't lose out anything in midfield because you've still got three in midfield, yeah, don't midfield, you? Yeah. 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 But you're right. I think, like, to be fair, Per and I always call him a steady Eddie left back. You know what you're going to get. And he can get forward. He missed a great chance, didn't he, up at Sunderland? He can get forward. But if Leco is eye up on the right hand side, yeah. Gatner will come across. Yeah. And then Per can become a four. Can, can become a four, mm. yeah. So it's really flexible. Let's have a look at the league table, shall we, and, and see where we're sitting. Not much has changed from last week. We are still in 20 seconds. But actually, more importantly, a win today could see us lift ourselves out of the relegation zone. Doncaster just at one place and one point behind us. Fleetwood fell into the bottom four last weekend. And Bolton have dropped into the bottom half, having won just one of their last five. Unfortunately, you can guess who that was against. Uh, Liz, great opportunity to move in the right direction. What would it mean psychologically to, to get out of the relegation zone if we could do this evening? I think to win back-to-back -back games as Jackals, these first two games would be massive for him. It would be massive for the club and, and the fans. I think they'll start believing a little bit more. Um, I think you, when I played, I always hate looking at the table when you was in the, the bottom four. Even as players, um, you sort of think to yourself, even if we win, it, the teams above us, if they win as well, we're still going to be in the, the bottom four. To be outside of it gives you a little bit more hope that um, you start looking upwards, hopefully. And as I said, Jacko's just got the team and he's had two games, two wins and, and a little bit more belief within the, the players about what the manager's trying to get from them. It'll be amazing back-to-back -back yeah. wins for the first time this season as well under uh, Jacko. So look at the top half of the table now, shall we? Uh, and looking at it, there's Plymouth and Wickham still lead the way, but any of the top five could end the day in top spot. Ipswich have broken into the top ten for the first time this season. They won three of the last four and Curbs... It wasn't that long ago, only a few weeks ago we were talking about them being down there with us. They've really kicked on since. Do you expect them to be challenging for the top six? And it's amazing what can happen with three wins and four. Yeah, isn't yeah, well, Ipswich, yeah, Ipswich. Yeah, yeah, because they've spent heavily and the manager's been around. He, he understands that the, the league and that. But we've been talking about momentum for so long. And as Kevin said, you need a bit of momentum to get out of this bottom four. Uh, a, result, a win today and one on Tuesday is that momentum for me. That'll be three games on the spin. And as you say, you can see what Ipswich have done. Uh, it can be done. I mean, we've got to have, let's be honest, we've got to have a, a hell of a run to, to get ourselves where we think we can be in that top six. But it can be done. No, you know, we, we've got the squad that could go on a really long run, unbeaten run. So, uh, but it's got to start. It's got to start now. Mm. And we've got to get the result today. Let's have a look at the fixtures that are going on today in League One. It is a full action-packed programme. Couple of standouts as league leaders Plymouth welcome in-form Ipswich, while Rotherham, who we play on Tuesday, host Sunderland at the New York Stadium. Apologies there, will come up. Out of form Portsmouth and Bolton go head-to-head -head at Fratton Park, while Oxford, who have won four of the last five, uh, sit in the final playoff place. They face Morecambe. I promise you. There we go. <laughs> At least there's a few tasty fixtures yeah. in there, aren't there? Stand-up yeah. ones for you? Some big games in, in, in this league now. Isn't it? I'm looking at the... Um, oh, it's gone there. The Sheffield... Is it Sheffield Wednesday game? Um, Sheffield Wednesday, massive club. You've got Sunderland, Rotherham. Also Wigan as well. Wigan are doing really good at the moment. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's some Portsmouth for a big club, Portsmouth Bolton. Yeah. Um, some big games. And if, if those clubs start getting momentum and start winning games, it's... It's going to be a really good league, a real hard league. There's so many ex-Premier League clubs there, yeah. you know, like, and, and, and not forgetting some of the others. I mean, it is a massive league yeah. now, the, yeah. way, the way it's shaped up. And, you know, you look at 
perhaps we're struggling a bit, but you know, you look at the other clubs. But as I say, let's look at Ipswich at the moment. We've put f three games together, three out of four, whatever, and they're suddenly in the top half or around that, and that's what we've got to do. They're just a few games ahead of us in that sense. Mm. Yeah, yeah. 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 OK, uh, let's move on to club news, shall we, and start, as always, with ticket news. There we go. Tickets for our next three home matches are now on sale against Rotherham, Haventon, Waterlooville in the FA Cup and Plymouth. Adult tickets for the two league matches start at just £18, with adult tickets for the cup match priced at £10 each. You can get tickets for all three games by heading to booking.cafc.co.uk. A streaming update now, and as always, we'd like to remind all fans that today's game is only available to live stream outside of the UK and Ireland. That's due to EFL broadcasting rules, as is the case with every Saturday 3pm game this season. Unfortunately, we can only live stream outside of England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Jersey, Guernsey, the Isle of Man and the Republic of Ireland. Overseas fans, though, can purchase a match pass for today's game for just £10 by going to cafc.co.uk. I'm also delighted to announce that last weekend's match at Sunderland saw Charlton TV smash its record for the number of supporters watching overseas. So a big thank you to everyone who tuned in. Let's keep smashing it. Tuesday's game against Rotherham here at the Valley is available to stream in the UK and Ireland as well as worldwide. Match passes are priced at just a tenner and you can get yours online by heading to cafc.co.uk. We've also received confirmation that next Saturday's FA Cup tie against Haven and Waterlooville will not be available to stream anywhere in the world. That's due to FA broadcast regulations. All Charlton TV subscribers, though, will be able to tune in to live audio commentary. Now, during half-term last week, Charlton and Connor Washington fan Tegan was surprised by the man himself. He surprised Tegan by chatting to her on a Zoom call. And look who's over his shoulder. He even received a hello from Johnny Jackson as well. Look at that beaming smile. Isn't that what it's all about? Brilliant. Finally, our last home game, we were pleased to welcome a group of Danish students to the Valley. Here's a, a little bit more about them. They're here for uh, some work placement, and then we got tickets for this match. In the 90s, I used to fax Alan Simonsen uh, once every week because he was the national coach of the Faroese national team, that's where I'm brought up and um, well, I was working for the Football Association and uh, he needed the football news. Okay, folks, can we sing? Well, they're not going to win a Eurovision Song Contest, but uh, <laughs> great to hear from Rani there. And hopefully a few of his students will be tuning in to Charlton TV this afternoon. Now, look, we've, we've got to uh, touch on some, some very sad news we, we talked about recently. That's the, the passing of former addict Paul Linger, who lost his battle with cancer. Someone who we know very well. We, we knew him as, as Cluffy. Fantastic kid, as I remember him, certainly. And Liz, you're involved in a memorial match tomorrow, aren't you? I'll be there. Yeah. Won't be playing. But yeah. tell us more about it. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, I've just got with, along with a charity and we're, we're going to try and have a, a memorial game for him at, at Cray Valley Football Club tomorrow at 12, 12 p.m. kickoff. So it's just a, um, a chance to remember him, get everyone together and um, appreciate everything he's done for me. I know he's done a lot for me. When I, when I first joined Charlton, he, he was one of the first people that came up to me and gave me a little bit of advice. and and confidence so um, yeah we're going to do a memorial for him and hopefully all the Charlton supporters and his family and all the friends will come out and support today. Brilliant, what are your best memories of Cluffy? Um, just in and around the training ground, never played with him that much, he weren't here that long but when you meet someone for such a short amount of time and they have such an influence in your life, it's, it, he really impacted my life so um, it's just around the training ground, the advice he gave me, always smiling, I don't ever remember him being upset, he's always smiling and he was always enjoying himself um, he went in the team a lot, but he was, he was so good to have around the building and he was a good man. So, yeah, I thought 
this would be a good way to, to show my appreciation for him. Yeah, he was only a young kid when I was in the first team, but, it, but he did have a, a really nice aura about him, yeah. as well as being a good player. He was a decent player, and, and he probably got stifled a little bit because we was moving upwards, and uh, perhaps if it, had, if it had come along a couple of years earlier, he would have played a lot more games. Mm. Uh, but, you know, we was on the move, and it was difficult for him to break through, and he ended up leaving. Uh, not without scoring that fantastic goal at Ipswich. Yes. But I, I always, yeah, what, what Kevin's saying, he, he always had a smile and he was always considerate and was was always life and soul. Mm. So, uh, yeah, really so, sad. So it'd be great then if people could support this as well, one. Yeah. But two, Liz and a few of the former players are going to be playing. How many do you think will last 90 minutes? I don't know, Liz, who's, who's, who you got in your side? <laughs> give, us, give us some names, do you know? I don't expect anyone to last nine minutes. Um, Paul Conchessi said he's coming down. Um, who else is coming down? Jacko's going to be there. Jason Yule's going to be there. So we've got the... John Fulton will be there. John Fulton will be there. Cole Lieburn. So we've got a really, good, a really good old mixture between old my generation and the generation before, Cluffy's generation. So we've got a few people coming down and, and support the day. We've got a few um, ex-pros as well from other clubs that have come down and show their appreciation. So it should be a really good day and a, a really good game. Brilliant. I'm looking forward to it. If you can't make the match, you can still donate to the Paul Linger Memorial Match Just Giving page. And many sports clubs and charities will benefit from the proceeds as well as Paul's family. OK. Um, the Charlton women's team are back in action at the Oakwood tomorrow afternoon. And Charlton TV caught up with Captain Lauren Bruton to see how she's getting on with her rehab. When I was younger, Charlton, was a, Charlton women was a really big women's team at that point with a lot of really good players, um, well-known players as well. So to be able to be a part of their journey and coming back into the professional environment um, is is great for me. So it's exciting. Everyone's excited to be a part of part of Charlton as a as a group. We've got a great bunch of girls, very professional, and I think yeah, I think that's a really important part um, to push this team forward. Talking to Karen um, and seeing where she wanted to drive and take the club um, was a really big part of why I come here um, and I think from how we've started and what we're planning to do as a club um, is exciting and that's what I wanted to be a part of. Any footballer or even any sports person will know how frustrating injuries are but unfortunately it's part and parcel. Um, but I'm hoping, I'm trying to be really positive like I'm staying um, positive from I've just obviously had the surgery and now it's hopefully it's only up from here. Basically I've just had a clear out of uh, a surgery six months ago that, that ended up failing in the end um, so it's just basically just a clear out at the minute um, which that's that's why I won't be out too much longer now so because there's nothing in there that's actually damaged anymore which is good um, so it'd be nice to get out and back even just running um, and getting touches on the ball again and just being in around the girls on the pitch rather than off the pitch, which would be nice. Obviously, you can't do too much on the pitch when you're not playing, um, but still being a part of training, still being a part of games, making sure I'm there, like helping the girls, making sure um, they're all good. But I think it's just important to make sure that everyone's there for games. I think it's really important to know that you've got support on the sidelines from everyone, whether you're in the squad, whether you're not. Um, and just making sure that we're all together. I think that's really important this season. Um, and yeah, I just want to be there to support the girls and support the coaching staff. And yeah, I just wouldn't want to miss any game if, if, if I didn't need to, so. We've got a, a really young squad. Um, I don't know what the average age is, but I know I'm one of the oldest. Um, and I get told that every day by all the girls. But no, all the girls are great. We've got a really good team environment here, um, which obviously sets you up really well for on the pitch stuff. It is quite lively. Um, we always have the music on. I think we've, like any team, I'm sure we've, we've got some bigger characters than others, so they're always playing music, having a laugh and a joke. Um, but to be fair, as soon as we get onto the pitch or as soon as we get into the gym, it's 100% um, 
um, and making sure we're working hard every day to get the results that we want at the weekend and running through brick walls for each other knowing that everyone trusts each other and wants everyone to do well so that's obviously a massive part of team sport and I feel like we've got that here and I think that will really help us through the season. Yeah, great to hear from Lauren there and hopefully she's back out on the pitch very soon indeed. A reminder that tickets for tomorrow's game against Sunderland are on sale and can be purchased online for just £10 for adults and £5 for concessions. And if you can't make it, you can watch the game live and for free on the FA Player. Right, back to today now and uh, Charlotte Richardson caught up with Brownie pitch side a little bit earlier to talk about how big a day this is for Johnny Jackson. Brownie, first things first, let's go back a week. What a significant result it was away at Sunderland. Yeah, incredible result. I think I think sat in the studio last week at Curves and Scotty and there, none of us had a win down, none of us. At best we were hoping maybe for a draw. We knew there was going to be a performance bounce because of the change of manager, Johnny coming in, but yeah, there's no way anybody, I don't think anybody would have backed us on a coupon. So for that, in that match, it was a coupon buster. Um, I think quite a lot of people would have had Sunderland as a home win. But yeah, what a magnificent result and performance, to be fair. Yeah, absolutely. And you were in the studio with the guys. And what was the most impressive and pleasing thing about the Charlton performance from your point of view? I just think the way that they seem to come together within a couple of days. And that's no disrespect to what was going on before, because everybody can get themselves in a place in management where it just isn't working. Um, and unfortunately, when you looked at that game on the Tuesday night, where we lost at home 3-2, you just felt there needed to be a change. Uh, the impressive thing was how Johnny made the five changes, changed the formation and then got that performance out of him in a very short space of time. Um, like I said, I didn't think we were going to get result there, but I was pinned this game today as the important one. And I still think it is. I think today is, a, is vital that we go and, and take that result from last week and we push on a bit today. Because I think if we can bring four or five teams around us with, with a result today, I think, uh, I think things will change around the training ground in terms of morale, in terms of confidence, in terms of belief and then you'll start to see an upturn in performance. And it is going to be a massive game this afternoon and we're expecting a packed valley. How important a role can supporters play this afternoon? Well, they always play an important role. Um, I mean, they've, they've had a, a hard run of, of, of life actually supporting this football club in the last 10 years. And I think we've finally got an owner in that's, that's going to put money into the football club, he's going to invest into the football club. It, things don't happen overnight in football. People think they do just because you've got a bit of money. It's not the case. You've still got to do things in the right manner. You've still got to build. Supporters will always be here. They, they you know, were here long before I played for the football club. They'll be here long after. Um, you know, I don't do anything for this football club anymore. And the fact of the matter is they just want to see a team work hard yeah and you play know, for the shirt. work work hard and and that's the one thing Johnny will instill he won't let players get away with not working uh, at full capacity um, they will get behind this football team they certainly will today and they turn up in good numbers and it's down to the players to put in performances that keep them here and on that note obviously you know the impact it can have as a player when the crowd are behind you I suppose it really is important this afternoon to start the game on a really good positive front foot yeah I mean they're playing a team that's really out of form away from home um, but they have picked up a win and a draw they've just changed formation actually to a back three themselves from a back four and they've picked up a couple of results but in terms of where Charlton are at you can't really look at Doncaster too much. You've got to look at us. That performance at Sunderland, we've got, to, we've got to stay on the front foot. We've got to be a little bit more physical, actually, than we have been. We've got to work really hard. We've got to be physical, but we've been on the front foot. Richie Wellens puts together good football insides, but sometimes you can get in amongst them physically. Um, and they really have struggled away from home. So I, I think if, if we put in anything like the performance we did last week, it should be another good day at the Valley. Fingers firmly crossed and the results haven't been the best here at the Valley. So perhaps today could be a catalyst in turning those fortunes around and making it a bit more of a fortress from now until the end of the season. Yeah, that's, that's the aim. That's got to be the aim. You know, um, I don't think any of us envisage where we'd be at this stage of the season um, when we rewind into July. But this is where we are. Um, we've had the change of manager and hopefully that's a change of fortunes. But I, like I've always said, things can change very, very quickly in football. We tend to get very, very down too quickly. Uh, and you can change fortunes very, very quickly. And I think we've got a game today that I expect us to win. And I don't often throw my hat on, on results like that, but I expect us to win today. And then Tuesday's the game for me. That gives us, I think that'll give us a real good yardstick of where we're actually at. Rotherham are not a bad side. And if we can pick up the three points today, pick up something against Rotherham, 
then I think you, you'll, you'll look at the, the league table in a different light than we did, say, two weeks ago. And that will breed confidence uh, in the stands and on the pitch. Brownie, your form in the studio in terms of getting Charlton wins is amazing. You're in the commentary box today, so should we be worried about that? Yeah, yeah, you should be. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've, I've not lost in the studio and I think I'm the only one left that can say that. And I've seen off some, some good candidates. But yeah, up, up on the gantry, I, I, I dread to think what it is. I mean, I've seen a lot of losses this year. But um, yeah, no, hopefully, hopefully uh, with, with Doncaster coming to town, I'll be up in the gantry and see a, a win in three points. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. Back to you, Scott. Thanks, Charlie. It's always fashion he needs to worry about, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't he go on? Don't he go on? All these footballers have never said a word when I was playing. They don't stop talking. No. It was it was Brownie. Brownie got us the result. Not Jack Owen, the team last yeah, week, because exactly. Brownie was, was sitting here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you can understand where he's coming from. This is an opportunity. Mm. We keep saying it. And, and for us to get out of the position we're in, this is an opportunity. His next two games at home. I have to say fair play to Thomas, you know, before Sunderland, you wouldn't normally say you want to make that kind of decision before such a big, big game up there with a 100% record, but he yeah. saw what was yeah. not going right clearly and, and the timing of it absolutely yeah, yeah. crucial. Yeah, I mean, I bet Jacko thought, oh, that's nice, isn't it? I'll get, I'll get an opportunity and, and it's away at Sunderland at the top of the table. But no, I think, I think obviously Thomas was here for the game in midweek and the atmosphere and everything else and uh, he's obviously done done, done the, uh, the decision to, to change the manager and, and I think done the right decision to give it to Jacko because mm. firstly Jacko knows all the players, he's, he's been with them all the time, bringing someone else new from the outside, you know, boom, suddenly go to Sunderland and, and then a, couple, a game, a couple of games coming up within seven days, eight days, you know, uh, he's got to get used to the players, he's got to then try and pick a team and etc. So yeah, that's the correct decision giving it to Jacko. And it buys the club a bit of time mm. if they need it. You know, Jacko's now, he's aware that he's been given an opportunity to show us what you can do. And uh, he can have no complaints about it. If he gets a bit of a run and it works out well, fine. If it doesn't, then he's had a go at it. But I think it's the correct decision. It's bought the club, bought Thomas a bit of time. And it's brought the fans all together as well. They're 100% behind Most it. Most important thing, Scott, I know we've got kids for a quid and it's going to be a bigger crowd today. They've got to start getting behind the team. Yeah. You know, I think they was coming in pessimistic and, 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 and obviously leaving pes pessimistic. Yeah. And it, hopefully, if we can get the result of that, it will give everyone a massive lift. They were very optimistic after last week at the Stadium of Light. It was some performance curves, wasn't yeah, yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, we, we were watching Solid. it, obviously, with Brownie. Thank you, Brownie, for getting us the win. Actually, yeah, yeah, 11 yeah, players yeah. <laughs> plus the subs also did a pretty decent job. They started well, Sunderland, which you'd expect, but it, it was a great performance all around, wasn't I it? I just noticed how many players we got back. You know, we, we was getting bodies back defending in numbers and made it difficult. And when Sun did get an opportunity, we had bodies in there to defend it. And the other way around, when we got in the final third, mm. we got bodies in there again. There was uh, a lot more enthusiasm yeah. uh, last weekend. Uh, Liz, going to, on paper at least, away from home, the most consistent team in the league and winning. Yeah. I mean, how much belief does, would that give the lads? Because they were looking coming out almost shot of confidence before he even kicked the ball. Yeah, I think it's a lot of credit to Jacko and Yuli as well. I think to have that short amount of time with the team and to get that performance at, at a team like that shows that they, it's inside of them. And secondly, Jacko was able to get it out of them, mm. um, which is massive. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite positive about today because, as you say, going to Sunderland and getting a result now, all you've got to do is um, put out the same sort of performance and I'm sure, I'm sure we'll, we'll start climbing up the table. You're saying there that the bodies were getting in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're not isolated when we're defending, we're not isolated when we're attacking. Look at the bodies there. But it was almost, a, I know Jacko said, and he's right, is it, is it, it's not a no lose game because, you know, if you lose, you don't get any points. Yeah. But to go up to Sunderland, to put in that type of performance, as in his own words, they've set the standard now. It's very important that they carry that through now, isn't it? No, back to back yeah, games. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't think anyone who's played for Charlton and have jacked it in. You know, I don't think we've been in that position. No, I agree. But I just think that they haven't had that enthusiasm. They've done just enough in certain areas, especially when we've been defending. That has been the biggest problem. Mm. I know we'll talk about lack of goals, but when we've been defending, we've been letting two goals in a game, so you've got to score three to get, in it, to get the result, which is very difficult. But in, in our defending third, we made blocks last week, and we've been critical 
before then that players can run across the box and get their shot off, mm. you know, and, and unopposed. And it just ain't good enough defensively. So if he's done anything, I think he's, he's made us more urgent in the defending yeah. third. One of the standout performers was definitely Ben Perrington, and I spoke to him pitch side a little bit earlier. Ben, thanks very much for joining me. First of all, looking back to last week, how pleasing was it for the team to get back to winning ways at what was an incredibly tough venue? Yeah, well, it's been a tough start to the season, really, and obviously going to Sunderland, it was sort of a it was a win-win. Like you go in there, you've got a big crowd against you, Sunderland fans, and obviously to get the win, just topped it off with obviously Jacko being first game. Um, obviously, great atmosphere now, um, but yeah, great to get the win. From a personal point of view, how nice was it to, to get back onto the pitch? You nearly scored, of course. How tough has this season been? It's, it's been very up and down for you as well as for many others. Yeah, so pre-season at Reading, I obviously got the hamstring injury, uh, which set me back a bit. Um, it's disappointing to obviously be out of the team, be up in the stand watching the games. We weren't doing too well towards the bottom of the league. Um, and then I've come in, I've sort of had a up and down start. I've started, been out the squad. I think five games in a row it was start out the squad, start out the squad start um, it's hard to get a bit of a consistency um, obviously you're working hard off the pitch to try and get in the team and obviously coming at Sunderland we got the win um, hopefully I can sort of try and keep the shirt obviously there's a lot of good players in the squad so it's going to be tough but fingers crossed we can try and stay in the team yeah how's training gone this week and what's the mood been like I'd imagine it'd be very positive yeah we had a good week um, obviously before the Sunderland game Jack only had two days um, which isn't long uh, to prepare for such a big game. Um, but now I've had a whole week of training. Um, we've had good preparation for the game and hopefully we can show that today. Yeah. Uh, Jacko's obviously been in caretaker charge for only a week now, but what's it been like? Uh, have you seen any differences already? Yeah, of course. Um, instantly changes. Um, obviously, you don't want to speak at old managers and stuff, but obviously he's come in now and... Some, a lot of positive changes, a lot of work done on the training pitch, how we want to play, um, sort of drilling it into us, his style of play and his attitude towards the game. Um, you could probably see that within the two days at Sunderland, how the lads were, whether it's just the running, even like how they were giving their commitment to the game. And I think that showed and the fans hopefully could see that. Um, hopefully we can continue that. You must have been up there in terms of the running. I know what that wing-back role is like. You were up there and you were defending as well. I'm sure you really enjoyed it, though. In terms of today, Doncaster, the fans have probably come here thinking that we should win this, but actually they're on a, a bit of a mini revival. What are you expecting from them? Yeah, well, Doncaster are a good side. Um, you can, over the years, we've played them in the past. Obviously, the playoff year, um, last year, they're always in and around it, sort of to a top-half League One team. Um, It'll be a tough game today. They won't be any different. They're obviously a, it's quite a well-drilled side, um, but it's one of the, we, we've got to try and win the game, and we all know that we should be trying to win the game, so hopefully we can get the result. And just finally, how important is it that, that you and the lads get the Valley here back to being a fortress again? Yeah, well, the year I first came, it was a fortress. Um, I don't even know if we lost here that year, um, but obviously the fans are going to be brilliant. The more fans we can get in here, the better. The louder they are, the better. We know that when we were attacking this end, especially second half, say we were behind or level, it's always going to be a bonus for us to be attacking those fans and with the momentum that they give you. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it'll be really good. Keep running up and down that touchline. I hope you had your pass the yeah, last night. Good luck today. It could be hard work, yeah. Thank you. That left wing back role took years of my career. <laughs> Never played it for us. <laughs> I could have done it back. I was young enough to. Listen, like, like a few players this season, Kurz, Ben has been in and out of the team, but he really did show a lot of quality on Saturday, didn't he? And it's a player that you like. I like him because I think you can guarantee what you're going to get from him. He's like a 7, 8 out of 10 every week. And defensively, he's good in the air and he hits his body in the way. Um, and he can get forward, and he should have scored last week, yeah. let's be honest. Yeah. But I think, I think the, the wing-back position probably suits him, and the fact that he can change and he drifts back into that left-back position, it suits him, and as I say, he's a steady eddy for me, and I just think he's brought a little bit more defensive quality to the back three or back five, whatever you want to call it. What will Johnny Jackson want from him today, do you feel? Liz? Um, well, I think he want from the whole team, I think he would want the same energy. When I spoke to him, he was, he was really um, on point about getting close to players. He wants everyone to be two, three yards off the opposition. Mm -hmm. So I think he, he would want that from everyone. I think he wants that energy, he wants the same quality 
he wants that togetherness and, and hopefully we nick a goal and then we push on and get another one. Exactly, like we saw last week. Let's remind ourselves of the team, shall we? Two changes today Jacko's made, both of them enforced. Chris Gunter comes in for Adam Matthews and also Sam Lavelle is out as well, which means that Jason Pearce, who came on, did so well last week and he was superb, I have to say, comes in at the back as well. It's a very strong bench, mm. have to say. And let's move on to Doncaster, shall we? Led by Richie Wellens, they lost nine of their first 12 league games, but have won and drawn the last two. Joint lowest scorers in League One, they've conceded 24. The top scorer, Tommy Rowe, is just three goals and he's on the bench. Curbs, this is, we've talked about it, haven't we, both on and off air. This is the game where the fans will come expecting a win, so it's actually expectation today we need to deal with. As I sort of said, it's a bigger game than last week. Expectation levels were perhaps not so, so high, but they definitely are now. It's a must-win game for us, and I think the fans know that, and I'm, I'm sure they're going to get behind the team. And even if it goes the other way, they will still get behind the team. And as Kevin said about the players, they must be in there. They can't wait to get out, I should imagine. I would. If it had just won at Sunderland and, and yeah. now you're playing at home, you'd be waiting to, you know, come and blow the whistle, let's get out, you know, they'd be looking forward to it. Liz, as a player, how did you deal with the kind of, you know, the expectation of, you know, the fans are coming and thinking, we have to win this? How did yeah. you deal with that? Yeah, I think it's different in this area. I think there's so much expectations on players, um, with their social media, um, you win and lose two games, you lose two games, and all of a sudden everyone's talking about it being three games, so... I think you've got to be mentally strong to, to deal with football as it is at the moment. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping, I mean, as Kerb said, I think the fans will, will be on their side today. I think they'll be behind them regardless if we go or go down. So the aim is to win the game, not in the first minute or the second minute, but at the end of 90 minutes, hopefully we get the three points. And we've talked about it, and Jack will even mention it in the interview as well, making sure without the ball and defensively we're not having to score lots of goals. Mm. Did you see a difference there that, you, yeah. again, he'd, he'd have been working on that this I was, week? I was happy with that comment where he said, you know, we've been working this week in possession and out of possession, you know, because that was my criticism, really. I couldn't quite see us what we was doing out of possession. I can understand what we were trying to do going the other way, but I couldn't, you know, defensively. And as I said, just the little clips we saw at Sunderland, mm. we had more bodies back in the box defending, making it difficult. And, and quite rightly so, but we also went the other way. When we got an opportunity, we got more bodies in the box. Anyway. So they were, I, I don't know about the running stats last week, you know, because stats can be deceiving. But I bet we run more yards and, and we run them quicker mm. last week. Now that may be that, that may be the new manager bounce. You know, that's that's why that's why clubs make the change because they want something to change on the pitch, and that's what happened Saturday. Now the trick is to keep it going. But we have seen teams come here. You know, we talked about it, Liz, and we, you mentioned it, how many big clubs there are. And when teams come here, they love this. So, again, how do we deal with Doncaster in that sense? Because, you know, it's almost like they're Wembley. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. As, 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 as Kerb said as well, they've won one, I think, and, and drawn one recently. So they're starting to get on a little momentum as well. So it's, it's, um, I think we've got to get in their faces. I think first 15, 20 minutes of the game, make sure we don't give them anything to be... I'm grateful of, and, and hopefully we can wear them down, and, and, and by the end of the game, um, we can get the three points. Well, he's not come out yet, Jacko, has he? I'm sure he's just taken a deep breath before he does. Big day for him. How, how big a moment is it for you? Know him really well. Yeah, big day for him. I, 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 as I said, I went to go and see him before, and he, he's chomping at the bits. It's, it's almost like he was playing. He was that. He was that um, hyped about the game. So, yeah, it's a massive day for him. Um, he loves this club. He loves everything about this club. So. For him to get the win today will be, will be, I'll be excellent for him. OK, great result last week. Two very important home games coming up, and it starts now. Your commentary team, Terry Smith, Greg Stubbley and Stevie Brown. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, delighted to be here for hopefully what will be Johnny Jackson's uh, home... Uh, well, not debut, because he's, uh, he's obviously taken the team as caretaker once or twice before. Uh, and uh, also delighted to have back alongside us up in the commentary position. Uh, yes, the club couldn't afford another week of hairdressers, manicure and pedicure. So he's back with us. Uh, Brownie, how important is this game today to uh, just to, to feed off the feel-good factor in the result of last weekend? I think he's extremely important, Tell. Thanks for having me back, by the way. Uh, last week you didn't seem to want me up here anymore. Well, you know, I'm not saying, you know, we're, unbe we're unbeaten, just the two of us, just, just what I mentioned it. Uh, yeah, no, it's extremely important, Terry, and um, I, I think 
I've said it already, but I don't think any of us could have envisaged that result last.